It is common for most to be a little scared of patients suffering from a psychotic mental illness. One of the major concerns is about violence. And we do understand that concern. So we have an expert who will discuss about how to manage patients who are violent. Here he is. Hi. Mental disorders do sometimes lead to aggressive or disturbed behavior, usually due to a series of complex interactions between the mentally ill person's inner world and his or her surroundings. Mostly, this violence is a result of the patient's misunderstanding that people are trying to harm him or her. The management of such a patient can be understood in two parts. The first being the non-pharmacological. We must Ensure safety for ourselves and for those around us. Keep a safe distance and maintain an escape route. Take the help of staff members and the patient's family members to control the patient. In case the patient is armed, not go near until the patient is disarmed. Be calm and firm and try to calm down the patient. Speak softly without being offensive. Express concern and offer help. And be non-judgmental while making comments or asking questions. For initiating pharmacological management, we must remember certain guidelines. Medication should be used only to calm a patient who poses a serious threat to self, others or the surroundings where non-pharmacological interventions have failed. The aim is to reduce aggressive behavior and agitation and not to sedate the person. Sedation may be additionally required as a safety measure if the patient is extremely disturbed, but this should not be the main aim of management. The safety of the patient, staff and others in the vicinity should be of paramount importance while administering pharmacological treatment. Tranquilizing drugs are administered in carefully monitored amounts over short intervals of time. To the extent possible, rule out delirious conditions like those caused by substance or drug intoxication, substance withdrawal, or organic conditions like encephalitis or encephalopathies before administering tranquilizers. Antipsychotic drugs have a calming and sedative effect. Injection haloperidol 5 mg along with injection promethazine 25 mg intramuscularly can be used 3 to 4 times a day over 24 to 48 hours. Promethazine is necessary to avoid the occurrence of side effects like dystonias. Subsequently, the patient can be shifted to oral medication, haloperidol, twice the amount needed parenterally, in divided doses. The side effects of oral medication like rigidity and tremors, etc. can be managed with trihexyphenidyl, 2 to 6 mg per day. If the side effects of haloperidol remain intolerable, then the patient can be shifted to resperidone, 4 to 8 mg per day in divided doses. For sedation, injection lorazepam 2 to 6 mg per day intramuscularly in 3 to 4 divided doses works well. Alternatively, diazepam 5 to 10 mg slow intravenously over 5 minutes can be repeated 2 to 3 times per day. Intramuscular diazepam should not be used for this because its absorption is erratic. Supportive patient care like temperature, pulse, hydration, respiration, and blood pressure should be monitored carefully. The patient and the family should be reassured once tranquilization has been achieved. Now, a few common risks that we must be aware of. Medication may lead to over sedation and reduced alertness or even loss of consciousness if the dose is not carefully monitored. The patient may sustain physical injuries and bruises if restraint is used. High doses may cause severe rigidity, tremors, low blood pressure, and lowered seizure threshold. Though rare, a minority of cases may develop potentially life-threatening complications like respiratory depression and aspiration, cardiac complications like arrhythmias, blocks, and arrest, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Let me interrupt you here for a minute. Have you watched the film on acute psychotic disorders in this series? If not, please watch it. You will find more information about neuroleptic malignant syndrome and how to manage it. 
The other conditions are in the domain of medicine and I'm sure you know how to handle them. So back to the expert. The last but very important thing to do in this condition is to consult a specialist within 24 hours of initiating the treatment. That will help you further figure out the course of action. That's all for now. Thank you. Hey, that's really an important point. So do not forget to consult with a specialist within 24 hours. Hope this film will help you deal better with violent patients. If you have missed out on any point, please watch it again. Else watch another one in the series. We'll see you around.